Welcome to the presentation of my 70 second scale Mirage 2000C from Italeri. Similar to the Italeri Gripen that I built earlier, the Mirage was a relatively spontaneous and quick project without too many extras or a lot of time invested. The Mirage 2000C is a multi-role combat aircraft developed by the SALT in the late 70s. Earlier this year I visited the Aviation Museum at Le Bourget, where I took tons of photos of the aircraft on display, including those of the Mirage 2000 prototype. If you want to see more footage from all the museums and air shows I've attended, check out my Facebook channel. Unfortunately I've only seen a static display of the Mirage 2000C at an air show, but I got videos of several other fascinating displays at air shows on my channel. Now let's get into the building process. As I mentioned, I did not want to invest too much time, but I had previously acquired a cheap set of photo etched parts from Eduard. Here you can see a comparison of the kit part and the PE parts, with the instruments printed on paper. The kit part seems nicely detailed, but the gauges are just randomly placed. As you can see, the instruments from the kit part have to be removed before gluing the print and PE part in place. I had only used photo etched parts on one or two kits before, so this was kind of tricky. Certain PE parts like the head-up display here are really small and have to be bent in shape. Anyways, if you don't lose your nerves over it, they can make a huge improvement to an average kit. So after adding the PE parts to the instrument panel and ejection seat, the cockpit was pretty much done. Before assembling the aircraft, I used this improvised rivet maker all over the parts. I just free-handed it and added rivets along the panel lines and around hatches. This process isn't very accurate, but in my opinion it contributes significantly to the overall appeal of every model. To address areas that the circular saw couldn't reach, I utilized the pointed metal tool for corrections and finer details. Up next I added some weight in the nose and joined the fuselage halves. Then I joined the fuselage with the underside of the wings. After aligning those parts, I mounted the upper side of the wings. Following that, I added the clear parts of the canopy using white glue. The PE set also comes with antennas, which were quite tricky to position. In hindsight, it would have been better to add them towards the end, as they tended to fall off whenever touched. Additionally, I replaced the kit's pitot tube with a metal alternative, as it seemed more accurate. Another inaccuracy of the kit are the panels on the nose. Despite my initial intention to keep the time investment low for this kit, my perfectionist tendencies kicked in. Consequently, I filled the panel lines and sanded down the area. The wing roots and air intakes were also a bit problematic, so I used more putty to fill those gaps. When I was finally more or less satisfied with the model, I primed the Mirage and applied light compass ghost grey as a first color. As you can see, I also pre-shaded the panel lines on the upper side before. As always, I tried to spray on thin coats of paint so the pre-shading is still slightly visible. For masking of the paint scheme I used Patafix Poster Tech. I use this on almost every model I built, so I probably don't have to tell you how useful it is for modeling. Anyways, I placed the Patafix along the areas that I had already painted grey. Then came the tricky part. In order to replicate the bluish-grey used on the Mirage 2000C, I mixed several colors. I can't tell you the exact ratio of paints I used, but it was quite difficult to even come close to a realistic result. 
I sprayed on thin coats of the mixture and added a few drops of paint to make corrections. Also I had to be careful not to fully cover the pre-shading. The initial result after removing the masking was quite satisfying, but I had to do a few corrections later on. When the painting was done I applied an enamel panel line wash to the underside of the mirage. The excess was then removed using a makeup remover. Additionally I used Ammo of Mix Engine Grime to recreate the accumulated dirt near the engine. On the upper side I used the same wash but tried to be a bit more precise to avoid any damage to the paint job. Still I also tried to emphasize the rivets I had created earlier. To achieve a weathered appearance I also used oils along some panels and wiped them off in the direction of the airflow. The outcome was a heavily weathered aircraft, which was exactly the effect I aimed to achieve. Prior to adding the decals I tried to smooth out the surface using a high grit sandpaper. While many modelers suggest spraying on a gloss varnish before adding decals is essential, in my opinion, a smooth surface is crucial for a silvering free application of decals. That being said, I still gloss before decals, but primarily to protect the underlying layers of paint and weathering. The application of the decals was straightforward, even though some of them were quite small. A problem I encountered were these markings of the walkways. When comparing the manual with actual photos, there was quite a difference around the air brakes. Therefore I cut them into smaller sections and placed them individually. Despite all efforts to get a smooth surface, a few decals were still silvering. To address this, I carefully trimmed off some of the carrier film where possible. Working with decals can be quite challenging, but if you take your time, they add a lot of detail that would be difficult to recreate by painting. When all the decals were in place, I proceeded by mounting the landing gear. This was relatively simple. Here you can also see all the weathering on the underside. Up next it was time for the loadout. I started by attaching the heavily weathered fuel tank. Then I also added air-to-air -air missiles as well as anti-runway missiles. I don't know if this specific loadout is realistic though. The final part to mount was the refueling probe. Last but not least I removed the masking tape from the canopy. Then I used Tamir's polishing compound to remove any residue the tape may have left. And that's it! Here is my completed Mirage 2000C, showcased with my usual setup for photo shoots of finished models. This is the ground equipment set and weapon loading set from Hasegawa. Similar to the Gripen I built before, the Mirage was a relatively quick project, even though I had to do a few corrections here and there. Overall the kit is fine for the low price, but nowadays there are better options on the market. Nevertheless, I quite enjoyed the building process. It was quite challenging to find the right color tones, and the final result isn't completely accurate to its real counterpart. However, it does definitely pop out amongst the usual grey paint schemes of other fighter jets. After completing the Mirage, I decided to build something older again, namely this 48th scale BF-109 from Revell. I'm currently already working on a build review for that, and I'll also be sharing updates on my social media channels. Make sure to follow me there for more content. That's all for this video. Please share your feedback about the Mirage in the comments and have a great day. Bye!